Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to Hill Talk Tuesday. So this is Lisa. Hope you are feeling absolutely wonderful. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Today is June 11th. Uh, wow, halfway through even this month. And I know so many are busy with uh, preparing for graduations for their children, getting engaged, getting married. This is the season, June season, right? Hi, Tatalik, how are you? I know you are uh, getting busy because uh, you had an engagement in your family as well. Hello, Adrian. It's so good to have you all here. Today I'm going to talk about something that has been coming up for me and I thought if I can uh, go through it, if I am experiencing it, what better way to talk and express it and teach and share it with you and see how I can benefit you all in with one or two techniques to overcome the same thing as I did. So for those of you who do not know me, uh, my name is Lisa Bubari. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist and stress management consultant. I Today's session was because two weeks ago, I had an incredible, powerful event called the 3E event, which is uh, my 3E method, I like to call it, which is invoking what was, which is our history, the things that we have experienced in the past, embracing what is, which is the reality today and here and now, and evolving to what will be, which what is it that we want so what is it that we want to create and what is our dreams and aspirations and make those a reality so that's my 3e method when i do a group session i speak about my evoking where i come from how i landed here and embracing where i am practicing for over 20 years doing this business of hypnotherapy and stress management and evolving to what is what is it that i want to achieve next what are my aspirations uh not only to be speaking at corporate level at many places and if you know of a place that you would like me to come and speak either as a keynote speaker or a speaker for your staff or um, office anyone by all means please let me know and also to be on stages plus I started my nonprofit and we are going to thrive on that, which my nonprofit is for motherless children. And I'll be talking more about that later. But that is the transition. See how quick it was evoking, embracing, evolving, evoking, embracing, evolving. Now, when I do therapy with my clients, it is the same thing. When someone approaches me for help, it's not about their problems it's not about my tools my kits i have methods i have techniques but what i say and i ask them to do is once i take them to that state of relaxation deep state within themselves the hypnotic state which is what a state of pure utter relaxation that's all it is but when you go into that state of relaxation, it's like meditation, but instead of zoning out, you zone in. So you tap within your own self, your body, your thoughts, your feelings, right? And we go from our conscious cognitive level to our subconscious informative, which is the bank of all memory and information, all our behaviors and habits, everything that has been formed in our subconscious. By doing so, I give them a space. I hold space for them as i am taking them into a deeper level to whatever reason they came in asking them to witness to be a witness to be a witness to their own thoughts what if they were witness to their to their experiences what if they could just sit and witness 
what transpired or what habits they had, right? And if they could just separate themselves from what was, then the emotional connection, the trauma, the shame, the guilt, the pain is no longer so vivid. And that's what we do. As a hypnotherapist, I can easily guide you to that level so that you can witness it, you can feel it, you can know it, but knowing that it is not happening now and you are in total control to make additions, editing it, changing it, because what? We can never delete anything. We cannot delete anything from our past. So what we evoke is to realize it's like a light bulb going on so that you can see it better, more clearly of what happened as an adult version of you, not the younger version of you. Because whatever it was, if it is in the past, it is much younger than where you are right here, right now. Next, I ask them if and as they are witnessing it, what if? They had the best solution. And what would their best solution be? Because each and every one of us in our own mind, in either the child way that we are, the adult way or the parent, because we also have all that within us, the same way as I say mind, body, emotion, we have the childlike within us, not the childish, but the childlike version. Is so much still within us when we laugh, when we giggle, when we play, when we dance, when we win something and we go high five. That is the childlike within you. And being that it's so present, I ask you to tap within that childlike part of you more often because that's what that, what is that? It's the playfulness within you. And when we can play, when we can dance, when we can be more upbeat, it's so much easier for us to overcome the things that felt or are in your own mind difficult and depressing and hard and unfindable. Now, there is the adult within you that is more logical, cognitive, responsible part of you and then there's the parent the parent that hovers on top of you and over you and um, is overseeing everything judging analyzing to make sure what that you are safe that they are guiding you and controlling you and that's the part that we have inside us and if we all think about it Yes, we have it all. Now, sometimes the childlike behaves more with a tantrum and we need more of adult supervision within from in his side. When we have a habit that is no longer beneficial to us, we must also have the adult part come forward or learn how to soothe us to comfort us, to love us. So, got it this far? Just show me by an emoji, yes. Uh, hi, Mark, how are you? Mm, um, just by an emoji, a heart, or any kind of a thing, just show me that you resonate with this or this message, uh, you can uh, resonate with it, and yes, you experience the same things, okay? And if you are watching this right here, right now, please, by all means, say live. And if it is a repeat, let me know you've been watching this on a repeat. And if it's a repeat, by all means, just say repeat. And send me messages. I'll be, I'm, I'm here for you. So shame is one of those universal emotions. Shame. When we do something and we come back and we think, thank you, thank you for the hearts. So let me go back about shame. Shame is a universal emotion that puts us in a place that we come back, analyze 
evoking what we did, what we said, what we judged of how others perceived it. And then it's as if giving us ourselves from on the scale of one to 10, what we believe and how we believe, not beating ourselves up, but feeling a sense of shame, which comes to saying self-regulating, self-regulating that part of us. Did I bring enough value to what I wanted to say? Did I uh, provide answers for them? Did I bring my A game to the playing field or to Facebook? Did you receive something that you can take and do something with this or act upon it? or use it as a tool so it can in turn help you change, edit, doing it faster. So let me give you exactly the technique. And if you were on like Facebook Live with me last week, 10 days ago after my event, oh, two days, for two days I beat myself up and then I got up and it was like, okay, this is what I did not do. This is what I believe I came short in, and this is what needs to be corrected. Now, instead of criticizing, I turned it into critique. And by critique, that means I sat down and leveled everything. And what I did was compartmentalize this compartment, that compartment. This was perfect. That was good. On the scale of one to 10, what scale? of what number shall I give myself? And by doing this, it was not the entire thing because I got so many great, 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 great calls, emails, messages. What I did was the part that I believed I did not bring my A game to the platform. Even that part, I compartmentalized it. So by compartmentalizing even that one section, it's like dissecting it and putting it on different levels. Did I say what I needed to say? Did I value? Now let's turn it and make it for you. By compartmentalizing even the things that we think are not good enough. Because what? We are the first Number one, judges and analyzers and critics of our own self. And that's where we come to the shame as if we did something that it was shameful, but it's not. If we turn instead and say shame is like you did something and you have to be punished for it. What if you turn to the things that you believe was not up to par and said, how can I self-regulate and compartmentalize and look back and be a witness, be a witness to that instead of beating myself up, just sit back and say, I'll put and put down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, up to 10 things that you believe is no, it went wrong or have done wrong or have not come up to par. And once you have 10 of those items, sit back again and look at it. And each one say, is it true? Is it true? Maybe, maybe not. Cross it off. Cross off all the ones that it's not real and it was a perception. It was your perception. And if you can up the game and do it more playfully and look at it as the child within you, because the parent within us is there to safeguard. The adult within us is the self-regulator. And there's the child within you that comes and says, okay, you know what? Okay. Who walked away 
hurt, damaged. Maybe not many, except you were damaging yourself. And that's the part you turn around and say, if I come back and do this with more childlike attitude, more playfully, if I were to look at this 10 list, the 10 items on my list, and put a smile on my face and say, if I were to do the same thing tomorrow, how would I do it? How would I rise above what is right here on that list and say, if I can do this more playfully, how would I do this? If I were to dream about resolving this, how would I resolve this? Bah. And put it next to it and see which one you can just cross off and you'll come down to maybe two or three of them that really needs your attention to up your game. And you sit back and say, wow, I can do this. It's only one or two items. And even this one or two items, if I make it only 5%, only witnessing it, loving it, how will I up my game and be good to me? Because bottom line, my dears, is always being good to yourself. Right? So... It's living life with more joy. It's living life with more playfulness. It's living more loving. And knowing that you are worthy of so much more. That when something is hurtful, when something is traumatic, when something has occurred. You see, each and every single person that I know who comes to me for hypnosis, for making a change, I want you to know that there is not a single person that has not had trauma in their life, hardship in their life, um, either personal issues, relationship issues, love issues, um, even success. Because we all think of love differently we think about our parents, how to cope with our parents differently. Everyone has a different perception of what is the perfect life and re realizing that there is no perfection. Sometimes our perfect dream relationship is not the same reality that is on Facebook. So we all struggle with something. My struggle was upping my game. And believe it or not, it is exactly because of that experience and that I am changing my game and upping my game more lovingly, more childlike, more friendly to me. Because the first person I need to play with is the little girl within myself. And instead of beating her up, I need to see her more. So if I were to say, if I were to say, I see you, see me. I thank you for seeing me. I thank you for being here. I want you to do the same thing and say, I am grateful to my life, to my experiences, to my past so that I can embrace every aspect of who I am today. And if what you are feeling, what you are thinking, what you are going through at this very moment is hardship and difficulty, write it down, compartmentalize it because it is not your entire life, but aspects of your life. And if you could just sit back and breathe and dream, dream and say, if I had the opportunity to resolve this, what 
big dream would I have for me? What is my biggest dream? And how can I resolve? If I had a solution that I could just dream, what would that be? And believe it or not, if it is from your heart, if it is from your gut, which is your stomach, this is where we have the butterflies. This is where we have our stomach gurgle when we tap. And when you get your goosebumps and you get those goosebumps and you say, oh, I just got goosebumps. And your tummy starts gurgling and making those sounds. Believe it or not, is your gut feeling telling you, yes, it is saying yes. That is the solution. Yes, that is exactly what I want is for you to see me, for you to believe in me, which is you believing in yourself and knowing, yes, you can. Because the only person who can rise up is you. Who can heal your body is you. Who can let go of the past pains is you. You make that decision. And the moment you make that decision, it's the beginning of you opening that door and saying yes to you. For your dreams, for your success, better relationship, better home, whatever it is. Home, I mean home, the internal home. A loving relationship, a loving home that you come to. You see, we all have difficulties. Having a dog is incredible it's playful it's you coming home and they wag their tail they run up to you they lick you they they want to pamper you and they are there all the loyalty but it also has its own difficulties the difficulties of uh, taking them for a walk taking them outside playing with them so they're not just there but what it is every single relationship from dogs from children, from a relationship, having a husband, having a boyfriend, having a girlfriend, having a lover, even having a lover is tending to a lover, having your own business is tending to it, working for someone else and realizing each one, if you put 5% of more joy, smile, and dedication and no that you're doing it to better yourself, to better your life, to better you. It's worth every penny. It's worth every single day, right? So, in closing, give yourself the opportunity to dream to dream big and bigger and bigger and say yes to yourself. Two, evoke what was, be witness to your past, recognizing that it's not happening right now and you can make a change. Embrace what is the reality right here. No more sugarcoating it, no more masking it, but saying, yes, this is exactly where I am and evolving evolving to what it is that you want dreaming big like what you used to as a child and realizing that from this day forward every day in everywhere you can't make a difference you can make a difference and be not only the child the parent and the adult within yourself but saying yes to you why because you matter you do with every aspect of you and this is the best version of you and if I can be of a tool to help you reach that place so you can tap within your subconscious, so I can coach you and pave the way for you to do it faster, by all means, give me a call. This is Lisa Bavari, and thank you for being here, and thank you for saying yes to you, and thank you for being ready to heal within. I look forward to being your guide, your coach, your hypnotherapist, so that you know transformation begins when you say yes to you. Let me see. 
if there is anything. Hello, Michael. How are you? Wow, our president. I am so honored to say Michael Mesmer is the newly elected president for our organization, the organization that I take my hat off to, which is the American Council of uh, Hypnotherapists and Hypnotist Examiners. For I was on the uh, the board of directors, the executive board of directors, until I actually, my term is coming to its end, end of this month. But I know I will be a part of the committee. And so anyone of you who is interested to learn more about the science and the art of hypnotherapy, please, by all means, give me a call. Let's explore possibilities. And Michael, you are going to be an incredible leader of this organization and taking it to different heights. Uh, thank you, Mark, for being here, being my cheerleader at all times. And Adrian, hello, Claudia, Claudia Flores. Thank you for being here, all of you. I wish you an incredible week. God bless you and may the universal light surround you and protect you. Until next week, God bless.